Oh, like, guys, I've got one of these boards back when I was considering using the chip in another project with an MP3 player. Uh, didn't end up doing it, and it's been sitting in a drawer for a couple of years since then, uh, until I got bored, I suppose. But it's uh, the Silicon Labs FM radio on a chip, and this is a Spark Fun evaluation board uh, that I believe is still for sale. Uh, so it's Silicon Labs SI4702 or 03, I think. Uh, either chip has the same data sheet and there's a whole family of these it's an fm receiver on a chip and uh the claim was uh it was the smallest uh, fm radio in the world um and this is probably about 10 years old now so i don't know if that's still the case uh this board also has a, a texas instruments headphone amplifier with it and here's the schematic it's open source hardware uh from spark fun so what i've got is actually a clone of the spark fun board from ebay I've dug out a breadboard for this one, and there it is, one finished FM radio. So the last time I did an FM radio on a chip, there was quite a bit more to it. This one's more a matter of adding a capacitor, powering it, uh, a headphone amplifier, and then it's really just a matter of talking to some registers. So if you want to uh, change the volume, for example, set a couple of bits and the volume is changed. So getting the radio working is really a matter of using some controller to talk to it with a, an I2C interface or SPI or a version of SPI and uh, some buttons and a uh, display. Optionally, I won't be bothering with the display, but uh, I've got a joystick shift register that survived the hammer from some other project. SparkFun provides source code for Arduino, but I'll be using an 8-bit PIC and uh, code that's actually written in BASIC, in PIC BASIC Pro by Daryl Taylor, who passed away some years ago, but uh, left a great bunch of software behind that people are still using. Given the fact they haven't had to actually write any software yet, getting it working is fairly simple. Um, I'm going to try to keep the music down here, because this is FM broadcasts and copyright strikes, etc. The joystick shift register is being read in here, but not doing anything other than flashing the LED when uh, a direction or the fire button is read. There's a PIC PWM calculator online that will provide you with register values for an output frequency given uh, an input of a clock crystal frequency that you're using and the uh, desired duty cycle. And I'm looking for the closest here to the clock crystal at 30 2.768 kilohertz uh, that clocks this board or the chip on it it's a watch crystal and uh, I've replaced that I've pulled it off uh, so I'm going to use the PIX PWM output to clock that board it's slightly off but it's very close so I got it to 32.786 instead of 68 and I'm using a resistor divider uh, to attenuate the signal because the chip expects 0.3 volts so I've got to lower the voltage in order of magnitude to provide the oscillator for the radio chip. The radio IC will be using a PLL to clock that frequency up higher to uh, supply its DSP clocks so it can do its thing and uh, the whole band uh, will be slightly offset because I haven't uh, provided the precise 32.768 kilohertz frequency that it wants so um, I will have moved the radio slightly out of band at one end, but it's all still there. And the joystick input is working now, so I can change frequency and volume with it. A very brick thing to do would be to see how far I can push this out of band, so I'm going to input the 32768 Hz frequency that the radio expects to be clocked at and divide that by the 104.5 megahertz that uh, the radio is set to by the microcontroller when it's turned on and multiply that again by the 146.9 megahertz uh, that I want the radio to land on which is the output frequency of the local VHF amateur repeater and the result that I get is the new frequency that I'll be trying to generate with the PIX PWM and input to the radio IC's clock. You can get the same result with an online ratio calculator as you can see here down the bottom. And it turns out the problem with testing something like this is actually finding any signal that is full duty. Uh, 
so they'll normally just be broadcasting on an amateur band when the mic button is held down but I do have my old signal generator that I've dusted off and uh, I can tune it to the desired frequency roughly yeah, it's still an old analog dial and I don't trust it but uh, I can tune in a carrier on the desired frequency of 146.9 I've done another quick modification here too to disconnect the antenna from the headphone jack because the module usually uses the headphone cable as an antenna but I want to be able to connect that to something else, uh, something outdoors. This is some digital transmission in upper VHF, I don't know what it is though. Yeah, I need a proper speaker. Just got a hundred dollar microphone to make a video about a radio with earbuds. Yeah, but uh, most of it I can't play without talking over it because I don't want a copyright strike. VK4RAI is one of the stronger repeaters that I remember receiving when I was doing VHF. I could have aimed to listen to its input frequency at 146.3 MHz, but I chose to listen for its output for consistent signal strength. This won't be working magically. I've specifically cut a J-Pole antenna in the past for the transmit frequency for this repeater at 146.3 MHz. And it's uh, buried in a bush at the moment, but it's still there. And it does appear to be fairly well tuned uh, for receive from that particular repeater. I should explain that what I was doing there was touching one of the crystal capacitors to fine tune the frequency uh, since the crystal for the microcontroller is now, after all, the master crystal. Success, but that's enough of that rag chewing. I'm going to try for the 6 metre band, which for amateurs is between 50 and 54 megahertz. So I'm going to take again the 32,768 hertz that is the original clock frequency and just divide it by 2 because the 104.5 megahertz frequency that the controller tries to set the radio to will become a frequency smack in the middle of the 6 metre band and I've actually moved it up a little bit. I have uh, changed the channel and uh, the radio tunes in here. In case you're wondering what battery this was, it's one of the bombs that's pulled out of an 18650 that can recharge itself with its own USB port and built-in charge controller. So you get a pretty small battery inside. And uh, I'm just wondering whether that has gotten flat over time now with testing or 
the batteries in uh, the amplifier that's driving the speaker might be a bit slack. Back when I got this module, I was considering adding an FM radio to this project, which you'd recognize if you've been around for a while. But uh, the entertainment in it for me was supposed to be all about uh, making a graphic interface that simulated an old-fashioned radio dial. I had no idea this kind of thing was going to happen. So I'll call it quits for this part of this uh, series, or this project. And uh, I have started making it on a proto board. As you can see, I don't like breadboard. Um, I usually just find they get tied up. So there's a project on them when I want to use them and end up having to make the same thing twice in some sense. This is what I'd call the bare minimum to make a fixed frequency radio. So you just turn it on and uh, maybe it's a monitor for a repeater or something like that. I could add the frequency trimmer for the master crystal now. So that's something it wouldn't even sit in the actual breadboard. Um, it could have been better. I'm crossing a few clock lines over there, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's the best I could do in a hurry. And I've removed the headphone jack because this will have an amplifier chip. And when I was out getting the parts for the new board, I noticed they sell the same thing at JCAR or another clone. Uh, quite expensive there though. So I've got two projects on the go now. I'm more interested in this at the moment than the uh, core shift register. So I'll probably have the second part of this out first. Um, and I'll look at code and uh, expand this board from here. Alright, catch us next time. Hope you enjoyed it.